My history with the club actually starts long before I was born. My grandfather became a member of this club in 1935. I started driving at 16. I can remember driving up here and it was all dirt roads. In those days, when you left 209, you came eight miles up here, you passed two houses. Now they're hundreds. So we see what could happen and, and how this uh, could develop and we we have a very great desire to protect this property. Geographically, we're considered part of Northeast Pennsylvania. We are on the Little Bushkill tributary to the Delaware, which is one of the few pristine waterways in Eastern Pennsylvania at this point. It's actually pristine enough that they claim you could drink it healthily. And we want to keep it that way because that's really the main tributary to our lake and to the Mink Pond and to layman's through us. When some of the housing developments in the area began to be built and populated, obviously that brings sewer and water problems and so on to the area. And we actually ended up in a lawsuit with one of them because of their sewage treatment plant being placed on one of the three creeks that supplies the water to Lake Maskinosia. And we spent a good amount of time and a good amount of money fighting and stopping that. So we've had our little brushes with civilization. And not that I'm against civilization, you know, I, I live in a populated area to the south of here, but this wilderness is disappearing and we really want to protect it. So as we have done in the past, when there was some kind of an issue for the three of us, the clubs got together and started investigating how do we avoid having this happen to our properties after all these years? And one of the things we investigated was conservation easements. An easement gives away certain rights on property that you own. We own this property, but the easement gives the state of Pennsylvania the building rights on the property. Now, all of us here in this club and in the other two have always been interested in conservation. We test the water several times a year, every year, and we maintain records looking for phosphates and, and different things that could be signs of pollution from development in the area. And the Mink Pond Club and the Layman Lake Club, which are the other two clubs that are part of this coalition, are very much the same. So when we found a way to both protect the land and the water quality, it's a win-win. I broached the subject with the board and explained a little bit about a conservation easement. What do we have to do was a big question to me. We don't have to do anything. What we have to do is keep doing what we've been doing. Well, why would they pay us to do that? Because land is valuable and the resource of our property is oxygen, clean water. Even New York City appreciates what we're doing because, hey, this goes to the Delaware and Delaware goes through New Jersey and New Jersey goes to New York. And we are a primary water source for those people. One of the reasons that we were so interested in protecting this land is that we are the linchpin between the Delaware Recreation Area of the federal government and hundreds and hundreds of acres of Pennsylvania state forest and state game lands. If we can guarantee that this doesn't ever get developed, we connect the two and, they, and we turn it into thousands of acres that will be protected from development. Today, we are here at the Silk Mill in Holly, Pennsylvania, closing on the three clubs, Mink Pond, Mascanosa, and Lehman Lake conservation easements. The three clubs worked with Delaware Highlands Conservancy, looking at trying to get forest legacy funding, which is federal funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. From that point, we were able to apply to Open Space Institute and were awarded funding through both the Delaware River Watershed Fund from William Penn Foundation and the Doris Duke Resiliency Fund to match those forest legacy funds. 
Working with Russ Fairley, Charlie Moser, and Pat Kalpin has been absolutely great. They truly care about the land, they truly care about their clubs, and they care about conservation and protecting the wildlife. And this is what the Conservancy does. We try to protect our natural resources in perpetuity so that we can have a sustainable world. Believe me, the day that the signatures are on the paper and that comes in will be the greatest high. <laughs> if I was 20 years younger, I'd probably say party time. <laughs> but at my age, I don't party well anymore. <laughs> but it'll be a wonderful day. It'll be a happy time. It'll make it all worthwhile. You know, I have a son. I have a grandson. I'm, I'm hoping they're going to continue to be able to use this club and enjoy it in the ways I did. Many years ago, my grandfather was president of this club, and he had attempted to get the membership to purchase the 1,000 acres that's over here that's now one of the developments, and, and he couldn't talk him into it. My grandmother once told me it was the only time she ever saw him cry. Well, now I have a chance to do my part to, to save it for the next two generations, and I would love nothing more.